Today we're going to be talking about graphing quadratics in vertex form. And our vertex form of a parabola is this. y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Now that should look familiar from our standard form of a absolute value function. Just the only difference is now we're going to look like a parabola. Instead of with an absolute value being a V, we're now a parabola has a U shape to it. Our vertex again is HK. So the H inside is opposite of where it appears to be. If it's minus, it's to the right. If there's a plus in the, in the middle, it's to the left. And K is exactly what it seems to be. If A is positive, you open up. If A is negative, we open down. Also something else to consider. If A is greater than 1, we have a vertical stretch. If A is between 0 and 1, we have a vertical Compression. Remember our key points that we're going to end up translating. <clears throat> we start with negative 2, we get a 4. Negative 1, we got 1. 0, 1. 1, 1. 0, 0, Marnell. Go with the program. And 2, 4. So when we graph our translations of y equals x squared, we're going to be going off of 0, 0, and then going over 1 and up 1, and then over 2 and up 4, and going through translations from there. Okay? If A is a number, that's going to change how we're stretching these, because that's going to affect our Ys. <clears throat> so our first example, graph the functions. Let's first give our translations. Our translations, minus 3. That means I go 3 to the right. Minus 4 means I'm down 4. So our vertex is at 3, negative 4. So I plot that point. Plot 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Now think of that as 0, 0 now from those points that I gave us. From those points that I gave us, remember, okay, think of that now as your new 0, 0. So I would go over left and right since A is 1, I go left and right up 1 over 1. From 2, I go over 2, but now I go up 4. And notice how your graph is still symmetric across your vertex. And we have a sufficient amount of points for us to graph our function. <clears throat> the next one. Okay. The plus 4, four makes this go up 4 units, the 1 half. Since that is being multiplied to the x squared, that is a vertical compression by 1 half. So my vertex, since I didn't move left or right any, we're still at 0. The 4. I went up 4. So I put that point down. And <clears throat> now that's my new origin. Remember, typically we'd go up over 1, up 1. <clears throat> but we have a vertical compression by 1 half. So instead of going, when I went over 1, instead of going up a whole 1, I have to go up only a half. 
I go over two, normally I'd go up four. I can't go up four because I have a vertical compression of one half. So I shrink those down, I cut that in half. So instead of going up four, I would go up two. And then left two, up two. <clears throat> and that's what that curve would look like. Our next example. This has a lot going on. The negative means we open down, or our translation would be reflect on the x axis. The three is a vertical stretch. Remember, it's opposite of what it seems, so instead of going towards the positives, you go towards the negative 2 plus 7 is exactly what it seems, up 7. So our vertex is negative 2, 7. I'll put that point down. <clears throat> now I'm going to be opening down because of the negative. Now vertical stretch by three. So what that means, normally I'd go left and right one and only down one. <clears throat> but now I have to go down three because I'm multiplying those by three. I would go down four, but I need to go down 12 from this zero, zero point. Okay, so I'd go over two. Normally I'd go down four, but it's a stretch by three. So I'm taking, I multiply that four times three to get 12. So that's what that graph would look like. Our next example has a translation inside of our function. See how the 2x plus 4 is inside of the squared. So what you have to remember is that whenever something's inside the function, you have to factor out the 2 so that you know what your translations are. So again, let's list out our translations. This plus 2 moves us left 2. The minus 3 is down 3. So that's where our vertex is. Left 2, down 3. The negative sign is across the x axis, which means we open down. Now the challenging part is this 2. It's opposite of what it appears to be. Just as this plus 2, we move to left 2, this 2 we're going to take and we're going to do a horizontal compression by 1 over 2. So we take that 2 and we do 1 over, 1 over whatever that value is. So instead of going left 1, down 1, I'm going to just go left a half and down one, and right a half and down one. And it's okay if you approximate those. Then normally I'd go left two and down four. I'm going to just go now half of that, so I'm going to go left only one but down four. So I'm not affecting what I do with my y's, but I'm affecting what I do with my x's. So then... that is what our graph is going to look like. Okay, our next example. Just like the last one, just now I have a one-third I have to factor out. The challenging part here 
is one third times what number is going to get me back to one? Well, that's going to be three. Okay, so from here we figure out our translations. I go left three, I go up two, left three, up two. We open up because A is positive. This one third, this is the challenging part. You find the reciprocal of that number, which is three. Since that number is greater than one, it is going to be a horizontal stretch by three meaning normally I'd go left, left one, up one. But now I'm going to stretch that X over to left three, up one. And right three, up one. And then I'm also, I would go normally left two, but up four. I'm going to go left six, because I'm stretching that by three. And up four. I'm going to go right 6 and up 4. And this is what our quadratic looks like with our horizontal stretches and compressions. Okay, there are your two lesson questions explaining the transformations, how those are transformed from our parent function. And please make sure those are submitted on time.